you have these great courses. Joining us now is ABC News Washington correspondent Mary Bruce. Good morning, Mary. Good morning. Uh, the budget. I remember when Ronald Reagan would send his budgets up to Tip O'Neill up on the House, and they would be dead on arrival. Uh, here, President Obama comes up with his budget, and he's getting sort of the same treatment from the Republican-controlled House and Speaker Boehner. Tell us a little bit about what's going on up there. Yeah, dead on arrival is definitely a good way to put it, I think. <laughs> this is much more of a political document, I think, aimed at, at really starting a conversation, because certainly uh, the way it's written now, there is pretty much zero chance that this thing is going to become a reality in, in its current form. So this is, is more of a an opening bit in what is sure to be a rather lengthy negotiation. Now, people have had an opportunity to take a look at the president's proposed budget, this uh, first salvo, this opening sort of bid, uh, but it's not really as egregious or much different than some of the proposals the Republicans have. What's in the president's budget that the Republicans have been complaining about so much? Uh, a lot of it is, as you probably will not be surprised to find, is in the details, right? So overall, it's a $4 trillion budget proposal. The president's looking to lift those automatic spending caps. Remember those sequestration cuts that we talked so much about a year ago? The president wants to do away with them and increase spending on domestic programs, increase military spending. But the, 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 where the real pushback is, is that he wants to pay for a lot of this by raising taxes on the most wealthy, raising taxes on big corporations. And that is simply a non-starter for a lot of Republicans. Well, we heard about that in the State of the Union address. It always seems like one side cheers, the other side sits on its hands. So now that we know sort of where the president's at and we're hearing about where the Republicans are at, what happens next with this, Mary? How, how does this sort of get worked out? Yeah, you know, they always say that uh, the sausage making is really not something you want to see. This is that process now. Now you're going to have a lot of debating back and forth, probably a lot of hearings. I wouldn't be surprised if at some point you see some lawmakers holding up this, you know, tremendously heavy budget on the floor. Uh, but now they, they go back and forth to try and figure out what, if any, uh, of these proposals they can agree on and where the wiggle room is. And there, there is always some room for compromise. You know, keep in mind, we mentioned those spending caps, for instance, several top Republicans, including actually John McCain want to free the military uh, of those sequestration cuts. But the president is adamant that, you know, if you're going to lift the caps on military, then you have to lift the caps on domestic spending. So there may be some room to negotiate. We just have to wait and see where and how far both sides are willing to go. Mary Bruce from ABC News is joining us. Now, Mary, some poll numbers came out for the president right before the State of the Union. He's up above 50 percent. Congress, their approval ratings down somewhere in the single digits. Is there some sense that the country is tired of some of this wrangling? And is there common ground where maybe the administration and some of the leaders uh, from the Republican Party can get together and actually get something, if not done, at least get some conversation going where it's not as rancorous as it's been the past few years? Sure. There is some room for cautious optimism, I would say. You know, some issues, maybe uh, tr some trade issues, maybe infrastructure spending, uh, uh, maybe reforming some of the corporate tax code. These, these are areas where we think there is uh, uh, some possible agreement. But keep in mind, both parties want to show that they are able to get something done. You know, Republicans are now in charge up on Capitol Hill. They want to show that, that their party uh, is, is able to, to pass some, some legislation and get some things done, of course, heading into the 2016 presidential election. But they also want to show that that they're in charge too. <laughs> that, that, that would help too, I think. <laughs> in, in the Washington cycle, Mary, it just seems like they're always running for the next election. And out here in the Midwest, and I think through the rest of the country, the sense is when can these adults, supposedly, these real smart <laughs> people, men and women alike, can get down and fix some of the problems we have in our country. Is there a sense that Washington gets it, or are we just amping up for uh, 2016 in the, the presidential election? You know, I, I think you, you talk about that uh, sort of frustration with Washington that, that is out there in the public, that maybe Washington doesn't get that message. I think certainly that message was felt loud and clear after the November midterms uh, when, when Democrats got, got quite a beating. I think the president heard that message. But again, the second you're done with one election, you're on to the next. You, you can't help but, but, but realize that, that a lot of actions in this town are viewed in that context, that, that, that the 2016 certainly casts a very long shadow.
What's the sense uh, inside the Beltway about the way that the final two years of the Obama administration is going to run? Is he going to just uh, have the clock run out by him, by Speaker Boehner and the majority Republicans in the Senate? Or are they really going to sit down now that nobody in the Obama administration is running for office again and try and get something done? Is there a sense that things can get done? Is it optimistic? Is it pessimistic? Or is it just sort of Washington speak? I think there is a sense that things can get done, but you also, you know, look back to the State of the Union address that the president gave a few weeks ago. That's the tone coming out of the White House. The president is defiant. He's adamant that he is going to move forward to push his agenda with or without the help of Republicans. So you're going to be seeing, you know, continuing to use executive actions, and he's going to continue to get out there and push his message. You know, and he's saying, hey, Republicans, if you want to to get on board, if you want to work with me, that's fine. But he's also going to continue to move ahead with his own agenda because remember he's got two years left he's got the elections coming up and of course he has his legacy on the line and as you said it's sausage making now uh, house ways and means committee that's real the real power is the fight is going to be on and i guess uh, abc news will be covering that mary bruce you'll be a part of that as well that's the hope yep well we'll let you know what's going on here all right mary bruce abc news washington correspondent thank you very much and good morning Thank you. All right. There you go. Mary Bruce this morning from Washington. And it is ridiculous that it it was almost, what, months after uh, the president um, was reelected. They're like, okay, so who's going to be the next president, you know, in 2016? It is ridiculous. It just seems like a constant election cycle. Yeah, it does. Oh, well, we'll try and keep their feet to the fire and <sighs> see if anybody's listening. Yeah. All right, let's I take ourselves so. another break. More McGraw Live in the morning. Scott in for McGraw with Kelly Jackson.